Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 23 of our Transport Fever 2 Let's Play. If you guys are new to this series, definitely check out some of the older videos and consider subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date on all the new videos, both in this series and some of my other ones. Um, feel free to leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the engagement on the video. Plus, it's just motivating to see. You know, let me know things you want me to try out, recommendations you have for the uh, for this series and others. Hope you guys are enjoying it. We're going to go into a quick recap and then we'll uh, get into the video. Okay, so episode 23. We are just taking a look at our Yately airfield. We are looking at uh, some brand new planes, actually. These are the Yunkers JU 52s. Uh, these are great planes, 10 capacity. Uh, they go decently fast. However, uh, we are immediately going to replace them. So we actually unlocked these during the last episode. I completely forgot to replace them. Um, but we are going to go ahead and actually swap these out because as I was finishing up the last episode and just editing a few things, we actually unlocked the Douglas DC-3s, which have the same capacity but go much faster than the, uh, the Yunker counterpart. So we are going to immediately swap these out. And these are just great looking planes. The chrome with the red coloring that we have going on looks great. Um, and they are going to perform really well. So I'm very excited for that. Um, now, some other things that we unlocked. If we uh, just kind of head over to one of our truck stations here. We actually have brand new trucks. So if we hop into one of these lines just for uh, the fun of it. We unlocked the Opal Blitz trucks. Um, this happened right after I stopped recording in the last episode, so I just went ahead and replaced all of our trucks all across the map with the new Opal Blitz, Opal Blitz variants. Um, from the Benz trucks, they are faster, so they go 37 miles an hour as opposed to 25. And their capacity is uh, substantially more, um, as well as they have the dedicated uh, fuel products trucks. So to take advantage of that increased speed, went ahead and upgraded all of our dirt roads to the uh, the small country roads. Because um, you can see that the small country road has a max speed of 37, so we can get everything that we can out of those trucks. And our dirt roads only at a capacity of 25 miles an hour, so that should be a good improvement. Okay. So, in addition to that, we unlocked a few new trains. Uh, if we come into a rail depot, let's find one. If we come into a rail depot, you'll see that we got the Class A4, which is an awesome steam train. Um, it's an absolute beast, goes 90 miles an hour. We also got the BC4 passenger car, which goes 75, so that is a great improvement as well. Um, we're actually going to be discussing something to do with our uh, passenger rail line here in a little bit. But before we get into that, there we might run into issues where things back up. Um, so like if you come over here, for instance. I did a little editing as I was replacing these vehicles, just to kind of give them a little bit more queue space. Um, but if we kind of see anything backing up, we might just uh, pop in, take a uh, pause from what we were doing and try and fix it uh, just because I, I don't want things to break. And sometimes when you replace uh, huge chunks of vehicles all at once, you can kind of uh, break the, the system um, just because the increased capacity tends to uh, overload. Look right here we got, I mean, this is not terrible. I might sell like two of these, but uh. Sometimes the increased capacity can kind of break, can kind of break the line a little bit. So we'll just have to see. Like, like this right here this is a perfect example. So I'm gonna, I'm counting like four or five of these that can go. So why don't we just sell four of those vehicles there, just to kind of free up a little space, make sure everything's running a little bit smoother. And then I cut off a bunch of these earlier. I might add on like two more just so we can, uh, again, keep things moving. 
Um, but if we kind of run into any of those while we're playing, we'll just go ahead and take a, uh, you know, a quick pause and fix it. So to start off, our passenger rail and our freight rail are currently sharing the same main line. So you'll see right here, we have our, this is a crude and tools train. Um, we've got our food train here. And then coming up right behind it, we have one of our mainline passenger trains. Um, this is our one of our Flying Scotsman. I believe this is limited to like 62 miles an hour. Yeah. The issue is that this is limited to 50, this uh, freight train. So inevitably, our passenger train is going to catch up to it. It's going to end up having to stop um, at a block here and wait for this guy to you know, get ahead of it. And then it's just going to kind of be catching up, stopping, catching up, stopping, catching up, stopping as it goes. Um, now, the game totally functions like this. It's not the end of the world. You know, every, everything will run. Um, but it brings up an interesting... Um, and see, this is just what we were talking about. So I'm going to come in here. Sell like four of those. Um, it brings up an interesting dichotomy between the way that different regions of the world structure their rail. So for instance, in the United States, which is where I'm from, in case you didn't notice by my amazing English accent, um, in the United States, typically passenger rail and freight rail will share the same rail corridors, um, at least in densely popula populated areas. Now, part of that is that a lot of the development in the areas has already been done. So it's extremely expensive for rail companies to come in and, uh, you know, just build a, an entirely new dedicated rail line. But part of it too is that rail is not extremely popular um, in the United States as a mode of transportation. You can see that this just almost came to a complete stop at this, uh, at this signal because it had completely caught up. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Because rail is not the driving mode of transportation in the United States, there's really no major incentive uh, to get it to function the way that you would think it would. Um, whereas in Europe, um, from what I've been reading, I've been trying to do a little research on this, high-speed rail corridors are dedicated for their passenger trains. So the freight rail and the passenger rail do not conflict with one another um, to nearly the same degree that they do in the United States, which allows those trains to travel much faster and without um, having to, you know, timetable around freight rail that's running on the same line. So we essentially have two ways that we could go about it. We could just, you know, say to hell with it uh, with regard to the speed of the rail and just continue to share the same rail corridors as I go ahead and remove a few vehicles just to uh, get that to move a little bit better. Or we could begin building dedicated high-speed passenger rail corridors where it makes sense. So for instance, this long trip from Skelton to Carshelton, you could definitely see a high-speed passenger rail Similarly, from Skelton up to Tenerden, nice long run, which would allow those passenger trains to really get up to speed. Maybe even Norton to Carshelton, um, but like something like Hythe to Twickenham, that's too short of a distance. I don't really see a point in building like a dedicated rail corridor, um, mainly because the train probably won't get up to full speed in here. You know, maybe it would get a few miles an hour above what it normally would. I mean, this this line only has passengers on it for now anyway. But more, more my point being that I don't think the train would actually get to top speed, even if we gave them the high speed corridor. I mean, they might, but, you know, like if we were going to make a, a Skelton to Reading train line, absolutely giving it its own its own set of tracks to run on. Um. But you know, it's just something interesting to think about as we go forward. I'm not saying we're gonna get to it today. Uh, we really don't have the high-speed rail 
yet. It's still only 1936. Uh, we're, we're still virtually limited to 75 miles an hour, just based on, um, again, the, the fastest passenger car that we have available only goes 75. Um, that being said, as we go forward, it will be something to think about um, as we, you know, add in more and more high-speed rail. But anyway, that kind of brings us to a project that we were going to get to today. Now, Midhurst is currently connected to the rest of our network by bus only. Um, and Oak and Gates is not connected to our network at all. And I would like to improve both of those situations in this episode. So we are going to add in, we go back to our rail depot. We are going to use this. We just got this unlocked last year. Um, got it unlocked right as I stopped recording again with the with the all the other vehicles. So this is the uh, the CLE 24. It is a Swiss multiple unit train. So it is self powered. Um, think of it almost like a subway car. How you know the the car kind of powers itself. Um, it is able to go 78 miles an hour which is a little bit faster than our standard track can accommodate, but I'm just gonna keep it on the standard track. The three miles an hour is not enough to warrant um, building out high-speed rail. Now, I know what you're gonna say. We have the money for it. You know what I mean? We have over 5 billion uh, to spend, but I'm kind of trying to think about this from like a developer's standpoint or a, go a local government standpoint. Like they're not going to invest the money for high-speed rail to get an extra three miles an hour. Um, it's just not worth it, especially when there's a perfectly good rail corridor already running virtually between Skelton and Midhurst as is. They're not going to come in here and refit this whole thing just for an extra three miles an hour on a commuter on a commuter train. So that being said, we are going to tie in to this existing rail. <laughs> what is this? That is absurd. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it because we're actually going to... Uh, we're going to fix this or, or we're going to work with this. Uh, with whatever, whatever you want to call this. Um, in this episode. So let's actually start here. I'm going to, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to destroy a lot of this just because it is developing in a complete mess. And I'm going to try and, uh, we're going to pause. I'm going to try and grid this out to, uh, help Skelton kind of develop in a little bit more, uh, predictable, less ridiculous manner kind of like this angled road here. I might leave that. Um, and the rest of this looks okay. I am going to get rid of this. Um, and we are going to rework that stop. So let's come in here. Going to rotate this around. And we're going to add this in. Actually, let's come in here. Let's take a look at our terrain here. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to make sure it is by flattening out a nice chunk of land here. Then I'll come in and kind of smooth around it. Um, We're going to come in here with a passenger stop. And I'm going to make this quite large. So let's come in here. Let's do something like this. Quite a large station. Um, and then we will go ahead and add in our street access here. And then I might just branch this down. Too much slope, really. Yep. That is the case. So uh, with that in mind, I think I'll just pull this out. I'm going to pull it out straight and just see like where we could actually connect it up. So like that's still a pretty good amount of slope. That looks okay. So let's put it in there. Um, and that's actually nice. It's kind of like right in the middle of the block. 
So what we are going to do is we are going to put our tram tracks through there like so. And then all of our lines should still be going through here. We just need to adjust the stops. So that, and then this one, the Midhurst line, that'll go to platform three. And then that wants to leave that way. I don't really want them making that turn there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them leave this way. Um, and this line might end up getting um, deleted by the end of this episode. We're just going to have to see because when we add in this passenger rail, I'm interested to see whether it's going to completely kill the existing um, whether it's going to completely kill the existing line and that is slightly crooked so let's come in here let's add that back in like that uh, that looks good okay so what's broken here uh, trams no electric path let's find out where should have an electric path. Oh, these ones. Okay. So those need an electric path. I'm just going to electrify that, get those trams out of the way. And then I will remove the tram tracks like that okay so now um, as I was saying the skeleton to Midhurst bus line might get removed um, in all honesty just because I have a feeling that once I set up this train line I don't think anyone is gonna take the bus now in reality I would love to maintain both lines simply because um, you know in in reality like giving people options um, for what they want to do as far as modes of transportation um, you know, is valuable. Some people might not want to... Some people might value um, speed over money, over, over the cost of the transportation, and that's, that's a perfectly valid, you know, decision to make. Some people might value the cheaper bus ticket over the more expensive train ticket. Um, it's all entirely dependent on, you know, your, your personal ability to pay and, and, you know, your urgency that you need to get there and, you know, so many factors that go into it. However, in this game, I just have the feeling that that's not really how this game is going to function. Um, so now we're just going to kind of merge these in. 30 miles an hour should be sufficient. And now we need to get those signals back in. So we'll have one there, one there. And then these are pretty short trains. So I'm going to put in a bunch of signals here. And I might shift this to there. Move those to there. That should work. Okay, so now let's uh, let's electrify some track here because this is just going to share this existing line with the uh, with the freight. Now, how far down is it going to go? That is a good question. Definitely not that far. I'm guessing we'll probably branch off somewhere right about here. But to determine where that's going to occur, um, I'm first going to remove this road. So 
Let's remove that. And then let's pull this road out entirely. Let's go back into our country roads here. Let's connect that up. So now that connection is maintained. Um, and now we're also going to back, get rid of this road, pull that all the way out there. Now I'm going to kind of take this out of the way, connect that in there, just to reestablish those connections. And we'll come through here and just kind of smooth this out a little bit. Um, and now let's think about, can I make this any bigger? I can, okay. So might as well do that. Make it a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna come in here with a two platform terminus station. And I'm actually gonna get rid of this road so that this can sit right here on the corner very nicely and then i'm actually going to add in a depot right here i think this will look nice it's kind of tied in to the building okay and now let's grab some tracks here i'm just going to pull these straight out i want to keep them flat that should be flat i'll check it here. I think this will work. So this is at 24. And this is also at 24. Yeah. So we'll pull those out straight just so that I can make a nice diamond in here. 30 mile an hour. Tie that in just like that. And then these tracks are going to go directly across this right here. So let's find a nice high point. 22. And then I want to change this to something a little bit more modern. Tie that in like that. So this is going to run straight up to Oaken Gates. Um, and then these tracks, I'm actually kind of thinking, if I just pull these directly back into here, so it wants to bridge, what if I do a little bit of a fill? Yeah, so it wants to bridge this whole way. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. That doesn't really make sense, but that is an enormous amount of fill. Um, so what if we do kind of a combination of the two? We'll do a little bit of bridging, a little bit of filling. So if I build that, and then maybe back all of that out, make all of that fill. Like that. And then maybe out to there. Like that. I think we can make that look good. And now let's grab this track. And we will pull it along. Make that all the way up into there. Perfect. Now we have this nice bridge here. I think that looks really good. Um, and then we'll obviously have to come back through here and clean this up uh, once we are done. But for now, let's kind of make our way across the water. So this is at 19 meters. So where about... Okay, so like right at this contour is about where we want to go. So if I just pull that straight across... And again, we're going to use our modern bridge. Um, and I actually just realized, I went through and replaced all of the bridges a while back. Um, all of the 
steel girder bridges with wooden bridges just because I think it uh, makes more sense for a little country bridge. You know, I don't think that they would build something that in depth. Um, so let's back that out to there. And then I would love to get a node right there. So let's do that. Um, and then I'm going to back out this road just so it's not in the way of our track. We'll go ahead and connect that up. Connect that up and then we will pull the whole thing across. Like that. And now let's see if I can make my road connection through here. So if I kind of branch off coming down like this, bring that around, kind of come back up the hill, connect that back in. That looks good. And now we have a nice bridge making its way across there. Now, up at Oaken Gates, where do we want to put a station? I'm thinking like right around here. So if I come in here with a medium road, keep that nice and flat. I'm actually going to delete that and delete that. I don't want them to develop. And then I'm going to pull that up and then I'm going to bring this up maybe to about here so I can square this off as best as I can. How does that slope look? For some reason that sloped up. It's not what I wanted it to do. So if I grab this again. Does that look flat? Doesn't really look flat. I guess that looks flat. Um, and now I'll tie that in there. And now let's get our pass through here. It's just gonna have one track because I'm gonna build out the uh, the rest of the station. And these are gonna be short because these are just the, those little uh, little commuter trains. So we'll get two tracks for pass through, and then I'll get a another track on the other side. And that will be our station. Okay, so let's grab some tracks. I'm gonna pull these out nice and far, keep them flat. That looks pretty flat. Pull that out. Now let's tie these in. So this is gonna be 30 miles an hour. We will match it on this side. And then we'll do 30 again. And now let's check our heights here. So this is at 18 meters. And this is at 18 meters. So I'm kind of thinking that I might just drag this all the way up and just see what it does. I like that. That looks good to me. So we will, we will go with it. And then we'll pull this one all the way down, join it up. And now we have our uh, Midhurst to Oaken Gates established. Now, the next one that we need to work on is Oaken Gates and Skelton, I think is the one that we're gonna do next. So let's come up here and we are going to branch off, let's say right about here. And we'll try, we'll try our best to maintain 50 miles an hour uh, minimum on this movement. So we'll kind of bend this inside track around at 50.
I think 50 is a fair speed. Now let's see if we can make a good connection into here. So what would that be? That would be 47. 45. I will, I'll take that. That's not bad. Now we'll tie that into there. And we're going to have to rework these signals, but I'm going to do all the signals all at the same time. But that allows the skeleton to Oaken Gates movement. And now we will do this final movement, which will be skeleton to Midhurst. So we'll pull that off straight. And now let's see, that wants to go down to 30 miles an hour. That is just far too slow. I'm actually going to take this track first. For some reason, it's not letting me... There we go. Merge in. So that will maintain 50 nearly so there we go that gives us 50 through there so we will take it and let's see how these look terrible <laughs> just absolutely terrible uh, so let's back that off and let's try and make this look a little bit nicer Then if I grab this here, pull this out, it's a little bit slower, but I think we can make it work. Pull that out. So now if I grab this track, how does that look for slope? Ooh, that is pretty steep. Yeah, that's pretty steep. Uh, so here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to pull this a little bit further down here to make our merge. So if I do 50 miles an hour, And then again, 50 miles an hour. That should give us enough space to make a nice smooth connection that's a bit more gradual. And then if we pull this down to here, we can tie that in nicely. Now we have our merge in here, and now we just need to signalize this entire line. Okay, so we're going to want a one-way signal there. Find another set here. And now our merge is coming up, so I'm going to put one there uh, and there. So that's protecting that block there. 
This is long enough that I think I can get away with one in there. We need signals like that. Can I get away with one in here? Probably. And then we'll want some there. I don't think I can get away with one there. But I could have some signals there. And because these are the multiple unit commuter trains, I'm putting these signals a bit closer together, um, just because these are much shorter trains than the freight trains that we are used to using. So I think that they can handle having their signals a little bit closer together. We're going to need some signals here, here, and then I will remove these. And now let's come in here and let's de-electrify all the track that doesn't need to be electric. Because that has no need to be electric down there. Okay, so that's signalized. I'm not going to change these signals because those are for freight. Um, but now these are ready to go. So let's get these lines established. Let's get a new line in here. This is going to be Skelton to Midhurst. Quick auto save. Let's make it a dark blue color. I'm going to do CT for commuter. And this will be Skelton to Midhurst. And let's just make sure that our Platforms are where we want them. So it's skeleton. I'm going to put this on platform two. So let's get a new line again. And this one is going up to Oaken Gates. Yep, that's exactly where I want it. Let's make it a nice red color. Again, CT. Skeleton to Oaken Gates. Now, I'm not having these lines wait at all. Um, I just want them to, you know, grab whoever's there and then make their way up here. So at Oaken Gates, platform one, I like the green. Let's go with a dark green. And then let's make sure that that's where we want it. And we will do Midhurst to Oaken Gates. Okay, so now all we need to do is tie in this depot. that curve there so I'll try and make it a bit smoother curve just trying to get that to look nice there let's get that into there make this a double switch just in case we ever needed to uh, Send anyone back, and then we can go ahead and put the signals like that. And then let's get a non-one-way signal right here. Okay, so now let's get some uh, trains on here. So I am going to probably put five on each line. So let's go with five dark blue. Put those on the skeleton of Midhurst. Okay, could not connect all stations. Skeleton to Midhurst. Why is that? Let's check our electricity. And our signals.
Okay. Let's see, maybe it's that. There we go. So now they're connected. And our trains are coming on that line, so now let's go back in here. Let's get our next five, making the dark green. Those are going to go on the Midhurst to Oaken Gates. And then these ones, these red ones, are going to go on the Skelton to Oaken Gates. And now we've got some uh, some pretty great lines. So I'm going to speed this up. These trains are going to just come out periodically. Get on. We're going to get really tired of hearing that whistle. Um, and that should be the fourth, maybe the fifth. But I am expecting the passenger numbers on the Skelton to Midhurst bus line to just vanish. Um, and that, that whistle. Let's get a little bit further away. I'm expecting the passenger numbers on that Skeleton to Midhurst bus line to just disappear. Um, I don't think that this game takes into account things like, you know, multitudes of transportation methods, for instance. I, I just think that they are going to mass on whatever is the fastest. Um, and whether that is a good thing or not is, you know, that's up, up for debate. I'm actually, I'm going to uh, connect up this grid a little bit more so I can put in a uh, little bus circulator. So we'll connect that up and then I will come through here, upgrade that. Now let's go ahead and get a little bus circulator on here. Now, if the uh, if if I'm wrong, that that would be great. I would love it if people would continue to use the bus in conjunction with the um, in conjunction with the rail. I think that that would be fantastic. I just don't. I just don't expect that to be the case, um, unfortunately. So let's get that into there, and let's get some new lines in here. And why you won't just go that way, I don't know. And let's make this uh, maybe a light red color. So this will be Oaken Gates. Man, cannot spell. Oaken Gates. Bus to train. And this is going clockwise. So let's get that copied. Let's get a new line on here. Counterclockwise. Make it that same color. We will have it go in the opposite direction. And now let's get some buses on there. So if we go to passenger, might get uh, four on each. I feel like Oaken Gates deserves a little love. Counterclockwise and clockwise. Perfect. Um, and we're, we've already, even without the bus lines, we've still got a pretty decent amount of uh, passengers queuing up, which is great to see. And these are going to max out on their speed. Again, 75 miles an hour. It's still pretty good um, when you think about it. Especially because, you know, they they speed themselves along pretty well. Um, which is really good. So we're starting to see some good numbers here. Let's see. Yep. Skeleton Midhurst. Bus line. No one. Man, that's disappointing. Um, I wish that there was a way to balance it between the two, but I guess there isn't. Uh, which, you know, is what it is. That's just the way that the, the game works, I guess. 
So, now that that is running, and that's great, I'm really glad that we got Oaken Gates into the, uh, into the system. There are a couple other little areas that I think deserve some attention. So, Yately down here, or, uh, Norton, sorry. Uh... I think Norton could use a uh, little bus interchange down here. So I was thinking about coming in here with a little bus terminal. I'm going to pause it real quick because I am going to destroy that stop and a bunch of houses. What if we got a little bus stop in like right there? It's kind of crooked. Kind of crooked. Still a little crooked, but that's okay. Um, and let's get... I'd love to be able to make it that big. Still get street access over there. We can do that. That's perfect. And now we just need to sort out our uh, bus situation. So this is going to go to platform one, all the way on the outside. Um... This, at the green, should go to platform three. So that will greatly improve Norton. We do have a little bit of a dip here. Uh, I might just, I might leave it. Rebuilding it would be such a hassle. <clears throat> yeah. Sometimes you gotta, uh, you know, you gotta take your wins, I guess. And then on this rail line, I want to come in here and take a look at what we got. So this is maxed out at 56 miles an hour. I believe that's because of the passenger cars that we got going on, or is that the, is that the locomotive? Yep, it's the locomotive. So let's replace that with a flying Scotsman. That'll bring it up to 62. Um, and then I would love to increase the capacity on here. So now it can take 152. Um, and it's also a much faster train. So that will be really good. Because if we come down here, we have monster numbers of people uh, wanting to come down here. Now we also have monster numbers of people wanting to go to Skeleton. Uh, not so much Hive, but certainly a Skeleton. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and... I don't really... I don't really know if there's a point to doing this. I'm debating whether to throw on the A4s. The only reason is... Um, we have Scotsman's on there now. The The cost is not that much. You know, it's, it's pretty similar. I'm just concerned as to whether they're even going to get up to the speed. I mean, we can replace them with these, so then they could go 75. Um, but they're on the freight line, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get uh, Class A4. Let's see what this, this is 152 capacity. So we'll go with 140. Actually, you know what? I'll go to 160. And then let's go ahead and do the other, our other uh, quote unquote mainline section, which is Skelton to Ferry Hill. And these have a capacity of 152. So we will bring them up to 160. That makes them 181 meters. Which should still fit. Just want to make sure that they do. They don't. So they'll still load. They're just uh, they're just too long. Hmm, interesting. So 
So I'm going to have to replace these stations then. Make them longer anyway, because this is going to be too long. And you can see that it, it just drops the loading speed down. Uh, okay, so let's drop these down then to 140. And then if that's the case, then these are going to be too sh too short. Uh, too short? Too long. So we'll drop those down as well. They fit here, they just they won't fit in uh, skeleton. Which is unfortunate. But they should get up to speed very quickly. Let's come down here and uh, slow this down and take a look at the A4. It's an awesome, awesome locomotive. Although I do think the Flying Scotsman looks better. Uh, this is definitely more powerful goes faster, you know, more power to it, but I do think the Flying Scotsman looks better. So, you know, we can always come over, come over here to our Ferry Hill to Yately line, and find our Flying Scotsman. Pretty sure this is it. Come down here. Oh, yeah. That's a locomotive. That is the classic Anyway, guys, I think this is going to bring us to the end of this episode. We got a lot of stuff done. Um, I'm really excited for where we're going. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the uh, the path ahead for our rail network. Um, I'm pretty confident of, of what I think we should do, um, but definitely let me know whether you think you know maintaining a shared main line is the way forward or dedicated high speed rail corridors where necessary is the way forward uh with kind of a mix where we do something like we just did here um with the commuter rail so just let me know what you guys think and i will see you guys in the next episode remember to leave a like and a comment helps with the engagement plus it's super motivating as well as subscribe for more videos so you can stay up to date on this series and others have a great day thanks bye